and today we are in Woolwich Arsenal and as our custom is we are here to communicate in the word of life to proclaim the message of life to declare the faithfulness of the Almighty God Hallelujah the God that created all things not the God that men create but the one that created all things and he is saying remember your creator in the days of your youth while the evil day cometh not and then you will say you have no pleasure in them hallelujah bible yeah yeah what on the phone. Man, what does the Matthew uh, 6 5 say? Matthew 6 5. Yeah. Do you know what he said? No, he okay. Hallelujah. So he asked for Matthew 6 5. 6 5. Matthew 6 and verse is 5. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, and we are reading verse 5. Praise Master Jesus again. And it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrite, or for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corner of the street, that they may seem of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. I am not here praying, and even if I'm praying, the Bible says pray everywhere. The Bible says pray everywhere. I just go to hear what Jesus said. Yeah, but he said, don't stand in the middle of the road. No, no, he said go and preach the gospel on the byway and the highway. Amen, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And he said preach to every created deed, and that is exactly what I'm doing. Amen. In the Bible, word of God, 100%. Um, we ascribe it as the word of God. 100%. Yeah, we say it's the word of God. You know, there are many different versions. No, I'm saying the Bible is... Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's the thoughts of God oh. that man documented. All right, so, like Paul says, and uh, was telling Timothy 3.16. Okay, Timothy 3.16. Therefore, yeah, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be perfect and thoroughly the service and to all good works. Which one is what of God from there? Which one is inspired in the in those words? Which one is inspired? Yeah. In those words, which one is inspired? All is scripture. Yeah. Is inspired which, all, which one, which is all, one? all of the scripture yes. in the word of God. Right, I'm and quoting you the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible says all, all scripture. So the Muslim scripture is, yeah. is, is inspired. And the Muslim one? Scripture. Scripture. Yeah, is inspired. The Muslim. I don't know about that. You don't know about that. So which one is? Because we are quoting about Timothy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. All scripture, scripture. All scripture. Scriptures. Yeah, he says all. Scriptures. Yeah, he says yes, all. Yes, yeah. All scriptures. As I'm putting you there, he says all. All scriptures. So in English, all means everything. All, all, all. Yeah. Yes, so long as it's scripture. Yeah. So the Hindu scripture is inspired. I don't know about that. I know but about the, the Bible. Scripture. The scripture. The Bible. The Bible. It doesn't say Bible. You put the word Bible there. What I go to you. All right. What is, what, what, what is the scripture? The scripture is the Torah. Yes. The Torah, yes. the, the prophet, and the law. That is what the scripture is compiled of. Okay. And plus the New Testament. Yes. Yes. So, is, this is my, my question, is everything inspired? Yes or no? Yeah, scripture, scripture. So long as it's scripture. Okay. It's a R scripture. So, and it's referring to the, 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 the prophet and the law and the prophet. So and is, the Torah. Is uh, look one verse 1 to verse 3 is inspired as well. Luke 1, yeah, because of the gospel, ain't it? Of the gospel. Holy men, in time past, when they were moved by the Spirit, they wrote 
and they spoke the things that are jotted down here. Yeah, I think Luke. Yes, 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 as many have taken in hand to set forth in order declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitness and minister of the word. It seems good to me also having a perfect. Me, the word is the word I want there. Is the same as to me. To me, it's not inspired. He's telling people. It seems to me. I can tell you this one, but again, when you go down, who is he telling? The king. He is telling the king. Witness ministers of the word. So these people were eyewitnesses yes. and minister of the word. Yes. And it seems good to me yes. that when they all saw, yes. having a perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent telesos, yes. that thou. He is writing to the king. So okay. This, this one, he says it seems good. Yeah, yeah. But he's writing to who? The, the king. king. So this one is about Upadwa. This, when you tell me, at least one percent is known from God, I can understand. But when you say hundred percent is from God, I can understand. All right. So the word, the word. this one here, I just given you, is not from God. This one is not from God. But you're reading it. It looks like it's from God, but it's not from God. Uh, you wait, all right, all right, all right. Lick down, down. All right, brother, bless, bless. Hallelujah. My brother was here, um, and he was speaking about what is inspired from what is not inspired. And we know that all of the scripture in the word of God is inspired. Amen? Inspired. That means God inspired all the men in time past to write the things that they have written down because when they were moved by the spirit they spoke and they jacked down the things that the spirit inspired them to communicate and these are the very parts of God that he would have us to communicate unto mankind so when we proclaim the word of God we are proclaiming a message and the message is wrapped up in a name and that name is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and this is what we are saying that the great salvation where we are privileged to be speaking about is to be realized in this person. God please salvation in the Son. He is the revelation of the fullness of God. He is the embodiment of the revelation of truth. And God said this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear what he has to say. And this same Jesus that I hereby speak about is no longer here with us in a physical form. But he's here with us by the Spirit. And we understand from the Word of God that the mandate that was entrusted to the church is to communicate the word of life, to proclaim the word of life, to emphasize upon the love of God. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost which was given unto us. And the revelation of the love of God is a person and that person's name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is salvation to the ends of the earth. 
It doesn't matter how many times you have been hearing the word of God. Day in and day out. But every time he allows the word to come, he speaks to the hearts of men. He knocks. I said bless, said be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. Oh, we lift up all the hands in one accord. Singing blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. Oh, we lift up holy hands in one of God. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We say we are here. And we are here by His grace. We are here by His abound in mercy. The door has swung wide open. But as usual, Satan will try to hinder the work of the Lord. To blind the minds of those that believe not. Unless the glorious light of the gospel might shine unto their heart. To give them a knowledge of the truth. That is to be realized in the person of Christ Jesus the Lord. Today I bring glad tidings. I bring joy, good news. That today could become the day that you experience the new birth. That you born of the Spirit, born from above. For Jesus said, You must be born again. And if you be born again, you cannot see. Now enter into the kingdom of God. And then what is it to be born again? To be born again. It speaks of a new birth. It speaks about a transformation. A transpiration from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. For he is the light of the world. And he said that we are now the light of the world. And that we should let our light so shine that men might see and give glory to our Father in heaven. So the entrance of the word of God give it light and it bring it understanding to the simple. Where the word enters, it illuminates, it enlightens. And today the word of God is coming on to you. Another joy occasion another exciting moment for the possibilities are endless because the word of God is being preached and there's no distance in the realm of the spirit he sent the word 
and the word healeth them and delivered them from their destruction. When the kingdom comes, it comes with power to impart and effect changes. Another exciting moment, another golden moment. With the first and the second. Another precious the moment. I am the second when we live. Glorious moment. God bless him. He has the spirit of God within him. Can you show the people the love? Can you preach of it? Can you can you show me love? Can you preach the love I, I, I keep for? I wait. Okay, great. <laughs> no? I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. We do not talk thanksgiving. I will bless God for grace and bless his man and give him a beautiful thee. life. He came to shine the Cheyenne of God. And Lord, God love within you. Praise and God. ever since you gave, Give it boldly. That's what I come with fears and intimidation of wisdom that we can. But you know what? This is the time you say, Jabbar, God love you. Let me hear you say, God love me. God love you. No, there. No, yes, I'm lucky to have it. Is there? No, it's, it's not working. Love. That's why I'm not working. Angel bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angel bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a oh, mighty God we serve. Mm, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Angel bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And the word came unto me, saying, God's goodness is forgiveness. God's goodness is forgiveness. That means he demonstrates goodness by forgiving sinful men. When they believe in the report he regarding to his son Jesus Christ, he demonstrates his goodness when he opened blind eyes, when he opened deaf ears, when he loosed the tongue of the dumb, when he removed sickness and diseases from the body. He demonstrates his goodness. Every time the blind eyes open, it is an indicator that good news has come. And every time the deaf ears pop open, it's a sign that good news has come. And he said, go and preach the gospel and heal the sick and cast the devil and cleanse the leper and raise the dead. So they are not only physical dead, but you are the spiritually dead. Today they are in the land of the living, walking up and down. But little did they know that they are dead in their trespasses and sin. They are dead to the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
and he sent us to resurrect the dead. He sent the word, and the word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And when the kingdom comes, it comes with that ability. It comes with that power. And as I speak, these are the words in your hearing. It doesn't matter how far you are, how near you are. To them that believe all things are possible, that means God will work according to your faith. He said to the blind man, if you believe, may it be according to your faith. And immediately his eyes were open. He still opened blind eyes. He still opened the ears. He's still the miracle working God. In spite of what Satan might do in. God still have power over everything. I just said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, or against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. So there are spiritual wickedness in high places that will try to win that the gospel from going forth, who try to blind the minds of those that they will not believe the report. But today, as he knocked at the door of your heart, as he beckons and reaches out even on to you, as the grace of the Lord and the mercy of the Lord extended out even on to you, we say salvation has come near unto you today. Peradventure you know him not as your personal Lord and Savior. For what is vitally important is the issue regarding to the soul. And he don't want you to perish. And when we use the terminology perish, we are talking about dying in a sinful state, dying without Christ in your life, because he is the eternal word of God. And when all is said and done, when all is over, this is what we found. This is what will really matter. Have you the eternal word? of God abiding in your heart. The grass will wither. The flowers will fade away. Only the word of God will stand the test of time. Only the word of God will end for. Jesus is the revelation of the word of God. And he wants to come and make his abode in your heart. Will you open the door of your heart and let him in? Is there any way you can see in your heart? Is there any room? in your heart has he knocked at the door has he knocked at the door I'm about to bring my sermon to a close I'm about to bring my message to an end for I'm out on the street 
all day to the year proclaiming the love of God. And we do it because we believe that the clock is ticking and time is running out. And while it is called to the year, it's another acceptable moment. While it is born today, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. For his mercies endure it forever. Amen. For his mercies endure it forever. Amen. Oh, glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the eyes, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. People of Woolwich, as I'm about to bring my sermon to a close, the very intent why I proclaim the glad tidings that for adventure someone will hear and respond. Someone will accept the provision that God has provided for their sin. That someone will choose to believe wholeheartedly to thee and receive the forgiveness that he has offered to his son Jesus Christ. Jesus is the forgiveness of God. Jesus is the mercies of God. Jesus is the goodness of God. Jesus is the love of God. And Jesus is the revelation of the truth that God unveiled to mankind. And he said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear what he has to say. We read for God so loved the world that he gave his own love to God, ten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You see, there are two eternal dimensions. You have heaven and you have hell. And Jesus speaks about these two eternal dimensions to make us aware that this place do exist. And it's not his desire not his will that any should perish so he command men never where to repent repent for the kingdom of God has come near unto you repent and believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ repent and be converted that your sins might be blacked out Doesn't matter how many times you have heard the same words repeated time and time again. Angel bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, angel bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Who oh, are the mighty God we serve? 
Because I'm about to bring my sermon to a close. Because I'm about to bring my message to an end. I pray that the very few words that I've communicated today, that the word will penetrate the hearts of men. And that, Lord, you will convict, convince and convert the sinner. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord, I commit everything into your hand right now. Let your name be glorified. We thank and bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.